and you day I'm again with the amazing, the beautiful, the three wise men in one leet anywhere. I'm myself, Paul Reese, hovering in the background. We jump in every week for those who are new to our channel. Where have you been? For those who are not new to our channel, you should have, have a library of notes sitting on your desk from every single episode that we have done you these last 20 something weeks and more and this week is no different trust me i've got an amazing subject for us to go into and it's quite a deep one lee because you know it depends how you look at it but here it is how to avoid being the unconscious business person now let me just stretch that a little more you know, when I say unconscious, for me, the difference to unconscious business and conscious business is really seeing, evaluating yourself. And also unconscious would be practicing that business envy, money envy, success envy, really something you've said to me many times, which is being the failure of somebody else's success also. So, you know, there, there, there is there is a profound unconscious business practice habit that goes on on a daily basis. You see it on LinkedIn, you see it networking, and you see it at the end of people's business lives, careers. Tell us your thoughts on that, please, Mr. Tennyware. Yeah, not there. I mean, you could do you could do a week on that one. Couldn't you? So you could. Um, <laughs> a lot of people believe their best organic self is themselves. Wow. The best organic self is their true self, where well, the best organic self is their subconscious self. Now, if we took it another way, their subconscious self really is their true self. <laughs> However, in in the the belly of the beast of the subconscious, you've got all these little traumas and dramas that you haven't dealt with. So you're in the you're you're in the cooking part of life, let's say, yeah. Okay. And and the problem is with that, you can be triggered or you can take something that's business and make it personal. Mm -hmm. In the business world, yeah, business is a corporation. Yeah. So the word corporation, its roots come from the word corpse, which means it's dead. Business is dead. And the reason business is dead is because it does not have a life. The person that manages it, communicates it, is the life form that communicates on behalf of the corporate structure. So when we make business personal, mm -hmm. yeah, we're actually bringing parts of ourselves into just or into a record, just pieces of paper. So for it, so that can be heard. So the language we use. Yeah. So we might be, so if I talk maths, two plus two is four, four plus four is eight, eight plus eight is 16. It has no, it has data, mm -hmm. it has no emotional value. However, to a child that's five and you say you're four, you might get the reaction because now the data's personal. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in business, the data's never personal, it's an outcome. You are not what you do, yeah? But what you do is what you've chosen to do, or you're, and this is where I suppose in the business world, um, whether you're a business owner, solo entrepreneur, whatever, or you're working in a business, if you don't align your person, your personal being with what you're doing, with your own personal goals, you can actually be the brakes that's on somebody else's business. The brakes that put the handbrake or the brakes on or the break in their business, the downturn. Mm -hmm. If you've got, say, and it, and it, the more you've got, the more it compounds. You've got one or two people in a business and they're conflicting with where the business is going, personally conflicting. Then that's a bit like saying, like you're driving with the handbrake on. The team has to be aligned. The challenge is that people come into what they do to be validated, recognized, seen, or, uh, um, realized, mm -hmm. which means they're on a personal journey while they're trying to earn an income and or while they're trying to grow a business. So 
Uh, I can't believe he didn't validate me on my idea. I can't believe he he didn't give me credit for it. I can't believe I didn't get the bonus. I can't believe I didn't get the 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 oh the promotion. And that's in the job part, yeah. But, wow. And it, the same thing. I can't believe I didn't get the sale. I can't believe he didn't buy it. He's wasted my time. He's this, and it's they're all personal statements. So. But you could spend a lifetime in the drudge of it. The easiest way is this, and it is the easiest way. You've got your organic self, just to that herd. You drive out to the countryside, yeah, and you go up in the middle of nowhere, a bit like in Wales, and you just walk until the fences go, until the walls go, yeah, and everything's as nature intended. No houses, no nothing, mm -hmm. just bushes and heather and yeah, stones and rocks and all just all over the place. And nobody ever goes, I wonder why nature or God put that rock there. What purpose is it serving? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you go into near a city landscape or a park, it's designed. Yeah. There's an area for communal picnics. There's an area for football. There's a pond, a fountain. Something that's running water to attract people. Why does it attract people? Because instinctively, one of our hierarchy needs is water, and water attracts people. Another one of our hierarchy needs is food. So you need somewhere for picnic tables and different things because these are instinctively in us. So when we put those things in that's in a designed area, everybody goes, oh, how lovely and natural it looks, but it's not natural, it's specifically designed. When it has intelligence behind it, an architect behind it, a designer behind it, with an end goal in mind, that's sort of like business. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't just put a park there. They thought through the process, even down to how the paths went. Um, and I'm sure you've been to some places where you cut across the corner of the path. Because the, yeah. the, the path's in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah? Instinctively, we want to go that way. That's why they have to put signs up, keep off the grass, because yeah. it's a bad design. Now, keep your dogs off the grass, we get. When they tell you to keep off the grass, it means that, in a sense, that it hasn't been designed. There's something happening organically mm -hmm. in the park, so they put these signs up. In a business, when there's something happening organically, yeah, they put these policies in, these procedures in. That's a bit like saying, oh, we don't go there. We don't do that. When you've got too many policies and procedures, there's too many signs in the park, which means you haven't got a design business. Yeah. You've grown your business organically. And because you've grown it organically, you're trying to now control instinctively human beings. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's not a wholesome environment. If it's your business, it's my business. I've worked for years, and now this Paul comes in and he's doing X, Y, Z. Paul's got a totally different perspective. Totally different ingredients of life. The challenge is, that's where good communication is. So the easiest way to unweave it is this. There's the organic self, which is a bit like Wales, way up in the mountains. Or any, like, nature where there's no houses, no roads, no nothing. Literally, you have to walk to it. When you see the landscape there, that's organic. And many of us, that's like our subconscious. Okay. We've got everything in our life, all our experiences, all our data just dropped in this natural organic place. Mm -hmm. And we perceive that's us. So it's not us. It's just we've gone through life a bit like with this carrier bag and we've dropped everything in it. Good days, bad days, ups and downs. And then we need our aware and controlled self. Our aware self is we're aware of some baggage in the inside that doesn't really serve us. That's where we start to wear the mask. Okay. And when we start to wear the mask, that's our control self. We do not allow people to see what's in the bag. Mm -hmm. If we do, they won't value us. If they do, they're, they're sack me. If they knew I said that, if they knew I'd done that, yeah, if they knew my dad did this, if they knew that, that we got all this baggage, yeah, and we hide it. That's our control self. So an easy exercise is you have three columns. Your organic self, your aware self, and your developed self. Personal wow. development is where you design you. 
And the more designed you are, you can't take away your spontaneity. You can't take away your personality, as in your joy, your expression, your energy, the life you put with it. Mm -hmm. But you also can't step into teacher's box and get every single tick right. Because if you're going for perfectionism, you're in pure procrastination. Okay, wow. If you're going for perfectionism, you're in pure trauma. Because you're too worried and too fearful of what other people will think about you, which means when you're trying to, in perfectionism, you're trying to craft the Tutankhamun mask, the one that everybody's in awe of. Yeah. And if you're, when the real world is that no human's perfect. So why would you strive for perfectionism? A lot of pressure yeah. in that. And not only that, it's very disrespectful to others, perfectionism. And I'll tell you why. Because you believe they're that shallow. You believe they're that judgmental. Now, now, if you're around people like that, then you should have the awareness that they are. Yeah? But if they're not, and they're interacting with you, and you're too scared about what they think, that's actually you that's trying to control them. It's actually you that's trying to do all the right things and believe that that's what others want from you. Yeah. And then even worse, you blame them. I'm under so much pressure that this is what they expect. No, that's what you believe they would expect. That's from your organic self and you're not aware. So as soon as you trigger, as soon as you feel uncomfortable, as soon as you feel stressed in the awareness box, why am I feeling this? Mm -hmm. And it's because either of a consequence or of in the future, as in Paul might say this, John might say that, or in the past. Because as soon as you get triggered, you are no longer present. Wow. And if you're no longer present, you are no longer whole. And if you're no longer whole, you're, you, one of your brakes is on. You've got four wheels and one ain't turning. But you're trying to hold yourself together <laughs> to pretend everything's perfect. So you've got three boxes, organic, aware, and developed. Our responsibility, sometimes in real time, it can be a bit tricky to do because there's a lot going on. You're trying to deal with the outside world and the inside world. So reflection exercises. How was my day today? Well, it, overall, a good day. Had a few blips. What were they? Well, I don't know. I've got a puncher. Fair enough. Could happen to any of us. So it's a real world problem. Yeah, well, that's a, how did you react or respond to that? Mm -hmm. well, I found it very stressful. I couldn't, I've literally, because what happens is when we hold that mask, we hold ourselves so restricted, smiling, and, and nothing wrong with that. And when it's true and authentic, that means we're in our developed self. Yeah. But when we're always having to put that face on while we're on Zoom or going, we're in the meeting and everything's great, and then we go to the toilet and we think, oh, my God, how long another hour of this? <laughs> oh. Right, and then you're going back in. That that's the actor or the actress role, and that mm. isn't serving you or them. And even worse, then when you're in that environment, they think oh, Paul's absolutely brilliant. Then they go because you shut, you put that toot and car moon mask on, and everybody thinks you're brilliant. Then they go, Paul, you couldn't help me with this, could you? you think, oh, there we go again. So you've got to be in your developed self, and you've got to be able to say no. You've got to be able to say yes, and you've got to be able to realize and recognize other people's triggers. Because yeah. now the next column down is their, aware, their organic self, their aware self, and their developed self. So sometimes this is where we have the conflict. They're getting triggered. Our awareness, they're triggered. Our, our awareness in present is, why? What did I do? We don't didn't know what bags they're carrying on the inside, and now we've just triggered it. They're coming back at us. We don't, and it might only be subtlety. You can hear it sometimes, yeah. Or just a, right, yeah, okay, right. Um, okay, yeah, I can hear that. And they've just changed the whole persona towards you. And you, you should be aware as in, oh, what happened now? Yeah. Now, if you ask, that's too personal. What happened there, John? In my world, I do ask it. Yeah, but that's the world of playing. Uh, nothing, why? Oh, it just, just seemed I said something. No, I'm fine. That's where they're trying to hold the mask in place, where they yeah. really want to go. They really want to pull it away and roar at you. They don't want anybody else to hear the roar. They don't mind you seeing it because now you've triggered them. They've got the right to have a go at you. Yeah. So they want to pull it back 
roar at you. Yeah, I mean, and you you want to hear some of the roars they could let go. They also want to give you all fingers, two mm-hmm. or one on both hands, and put it back in like it never happened. Yeah. But when they're holding themselves in that place, and as soon as they leave that meeting or they're in the toilet, they're somewhere where they feel they can be themselves or some they're with someone they can be themselves, they start to vent it. I didn't like what he said. I didn't like this dinner. But that's one. That means they trust the person they're venting it to. The mistake is the person they're venting it to, if they concur, that creates reality. And that reality, that yeah. reality creates conflict. Where if they go, oh, and if we're in the oh in the aware column, oh, I'm aware that something just happened that made Paul upset. Fair enough. It happens to us all. It's life, yeah. It, and sometimes we're not aware of what upsets us. I don't know whether that's just me. You think, well, I, yeah, I don't feel happy. Well, I'm not sure. If it hasn't happened in the real world, and nobody said nothing in the real world, and you're in the inside world thinking, well. Now, that could be that you've been triggered and you're not aware that you've been triggered, but you're aware that something's not right. Yeah. It could be that the future's coming and it's not a negative. It's just that you, it's like that drip. You're sitting there and there's a drip. You think, what's that drip? And then it's two drips. So you think, all right. And then all of a sudden it's a stain on the scene and all of a sudden there's water pouring everywhere. Sometimes when you get that little uncomfortable bit, it's the future coming that you don't want. Because we put things off too much. Let's call it, I don't know, avoidance. Some might call it procrastination. And we put it off. And now that it's it's all backed up against the door. And as we move into the future, our organic self is reacting to what our, our developed self has decided. Now, if the developed self hasn't trained the organic self, you're yeah. always going to have, because the internal conflict we have is this, and it's this simple. It's our organic self reacting to our developed self or our organic self re- reacting to somebody else's developed self. Mm-hmm. And you can hear it because I go, why did you say that? And on you, you think, well, what did I say? You know full well what you said. Yeah, I know what I said, but I never expected that reaction, nor... I know what words to say, right? Make people dance and foam at the mouth. I'm sure you do. But when I when I don't say them, and when there's no undertone, there's no, I'm going to say this and I'm going to trigger Paul. Yeah, watch this. And when there's none of that in me, and I, I just want a wholesome interaction and a, and a positive outcome, and I want my well-being to stay in shape and yours. So the only way you can get there is being aware in that awareness column, when you look back over the day, what happened? Why did I feel that? Now, you don't need to know the answer to it. You don't need to know why the rock was put in the landscape. Yeah, which a lot of people think they want to know. Well, and they go right back. Now, the awareness is that there's something in my landscape in the past that ain't serving me in the present and it ain't serving my future. Now, that's one part. Because you might you might throw it away like it's nothing. How many times has this happened to me? How many times has it happened to me before? That's where awareness comes in. This is coming up regularly. Right. So is that them? Or is it me? Because the common denominator, normally it's us. It's me. It's most likely me. Yeah, it's them. But it it's them could be avoidance. Okay. Could be denial, deflection. But if it's coming up in me quite regularly, then it's me. So then that's the aware self. The aware self recognizing there's something not serving you or others. And then there's the aware self to make the decision. Do I continue like this? No. What do I need to do? I need to put something in place that allows me to process that data. That could be, um, yeah, I need time to think about that, John. If you don't mind after the meeting, I'll have a quick chat with you just to get a few a bit more of your thoughts so I can understand where you're coming from. And we have to put a process in place, a process or a procedure in place for us. That's in our developed self. So then, when we're in real time, we feel these feelings. We don't turn Paul or John or Mary or Frank into toxic people 
Because if, if we're in that world, what happens is we're either going to break, not them, us, or we're going to run, mm -hmm. or we're going to hide. They're the only three options you've got if you're not dealing with it. So when all the stuff comes in the future, all the good stuff and the organic stuff and other people's or good stuff and their organic stuff, you're not going to be able to cope because you won't be able to filter in real time. Okay. And, and so when it's all coming, they're all in different places. You go, that's perfect. Just need to get back on the agenda now. Um, John, I appreciate that's where you come from. Don't think we're there yet. But um, if you can put that into a PDF or whatever and send it over to put it in a presentation if you want me to give you 10 minutes next week and you can just run, it, run us through it. Brilliant. Mary, yeah, that's perfect. I love that, Mary. That's perfect. It's on the agenda where we are today and in line with where we're going. Uh, Frank, yeah, not too sure about that at the minute. Need a bit more detail. Um, we've got 15 minutes left. We want to manage productively. So this is what's on the agenda. What Mary said aligns with it. There's a couple of I's that need dot and T's to be crossed. Yeah, um, Paul's in charge of that. Paul's got a bit of a transition that should join a lot of dots and clarify a lot of things. And it should be managed but like do you an think, architect. Do you think, though, Lee, that if, if it's an unconscious environment, then, that no matter how you distribute the information, then it, would be, it, would, it wouldn't be able to land correctly. I agree. But if it's unconscious... Unconscious is very easy to deal with. Deniability is not unconscious. Avoidance is not unconscious. Disrespect is not unconscious. That's their coping mechanism. Okay. So when, when it's unconscious, you can navigate the unconscious world very easy. But if you're dealing with an avoidant, yeah, or a dismissive avoidant, yeah, where they go, yeah, that's fine. Or even worse than the victim dismissive avoidant, that's fine. Nobody ever wants to hear me. Yeah. Every time I say something, nobody ever. Because they're processing in real time organically. They've most likely walked into a meeting unprepped. They're trying to get up to speed. Well, I only ask the question. We'll come into a meeting prepared. I haven't got time. I've got this. Well, then you need to do some time management because you're stacking too much and there's a leak. When you see somebody that keeps asking similar questions, that's a drip of the subconscious or the unconscious. Okay. If they're not aware of that, then after like, I don't know, five years, 10 years, why aren't they aware of it? It most, mean, it most likely means they're dismissive, yeah, and they dismiss it, they avoid, yeah, so it's deflection, and it's always somebody else's fault, mm -hmm. always somebody else's conversation. Uh, I didn't like what Paul said, didn't like the words Paul used. Didn't like that he said them in front of John. And that all of that could be true. But every time, every time, this has always happened to me. I thought Paul was such a nice guy, and then he, he asked that. Well, what was wrong with what he asked? Well, he knows what upsets me, and he asked. Yeah? And it's like we, we think these other humans are psychic and have your rule book, but it, that's your organic rule book. Now, some would say about putting boundaries down, that you need to put firm boundaries down. Well, yes and no. That might be a coping strategy, but that wouldn't be the right way to go. If you need trust or you need boundaries, then you've got unprocessed data. Ah. And, yeah, because I don't need boundaries. Now, in business, I will put a structure in place because I have to put design in place to get an outcome. We want a nice park. And Paul might say, we'll put the path there. I will put the path there because we're going to have to put a sign there so keep off the grass. <laughs> we're keeping going straight. And then we're taken to a natural fall because there's a waterfall over there, Paul. Yeah. Where well, they're going to want the waterfall. They're going to want foas. And we could put the picnic tables over there, but most of the activity is going to be over there. So when we put the picnic tables over here and the toilets close to them, they're going to use the waterfall as a, more of a means of taking photos. Yeah, but if we put the picnic tables around there, kids are going to be playing balls and everything like that, throwing fistbees, which means people are going to find it hard to take pictures of the waterfall, which means we're not going to get the social media bump. They're not going to get the shared memories. So if we put the picnic tables over there, put a bit of a green at the back, the kids can play ball, they can throw frisbees, yeah, they can sit down and eat, and if the kids need to go to the toilet, it's not far from mum to take them or dad to take them. Hmm. So it's 
what's the outcome you want? But a yeah. lot of people are very good at the design, what the building's going to look like, what the windows are going to be. They're not very good at how the building's going to be used inside mm -hmm. or the park. Yeah. So what emotions are going to be felt there? What interactions are going to happen mm -hmm. there? And sometimes in some of the stuff I run, I hold everything quite tight for a little bit because I want to see. Yeah. I want to see the mask move. If I see the mask move, then I don't need to be psychic because mm -hmm. I ain't psychic, which means I'm never going to understand. Do you think, Lee, that <clears throat> when we think about you, we think even as even as a single business owner, or whether you are running a business with multiple, you know, multiple numbers of staff, that effectively this that what we talk about you creates power struggles mm. so effectively a power struggle in your business because of the we could say you know the the organic self developed stuff creates power struggles because of self agenda but even in your business as a single entrepreneur it creates a power struggle with your client and needing to do. and I, I you know i've had this conversation today needing to create success or get success over the line regardless of whether it was right or wrong. And I'm talking about well, whether... The it's challenge right. is with it is, is whatever the success is to get over the line. If success was easy, it wouldn't be called success. That's one. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be aware, is it my reaction to creating success? Because our reaction that's any, that is in any way conflicted with success is failure. Okay. Our communication that creates conflict is failure. Regardless of whether it's John's fault or my fault, it's irrelevant. What's the important the outcome? Are we still committed to the outcome? Yes, then we both need to get out of each other's way. How we do well, I feel this, I feel that. Put your feelings in the box, mate. This is about a business success outcome. Yeah. I'm worn out with it. Well, any any deadline you're gonna reach gonna take a lot out of you. If you don't, you know, it ain't a good deadline. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it the deadline. Because <laughs> when you get to it, you should be absolutely exhausted and overwhelmed. And the closer you get to it, now if, you, if you've got enough people on the team and everybody stays on script and everybody supports, you can get to that deadline, you can have bang, 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 like dominoes. Mm -hmm. And there's no overwhelm. But when you're in it, to win it on your own. <laughs> yeah. And you're, you're learning as you go, the art is, is any conflict in communication. Now, conflict doesn't mean I think we should do it this way. Well, no, we're, we're, we've worked this out, so you're not listening to me. That isn't conflict. That's your need to be heard and validated. They're not listening to me. No, I'm sure they can repeat back what, what you said. They're so controlling. They're controlling or the one that's trying to control success is controlling. The one that needs their idea put into place is the controller. The one that has the collaborative, and bear in mind collaborative, it's more than like, say, two involved. You, there's so many different emotions involved there, but some expect everything to go their way. That's a bit like going to a restaurant and saying, right, everybody's having beans on toast. I don't like beans, you're having beans on toast. But And they take it personally, but if it's not personal, it's business. The reason we get paid or the reason we have to push is because it, if we're stretching, if we're going outside of comfort zones and we're taking our business to the next level, everybody's moving outside the comfort zones. The ones that can transition quickly are the ones that will take you to success. The ones that will hold on to yesterday and all the tomorrows, all, all the tomorrows that will come, they're either in the future, yeah, which means I can't let go of that to go here, or what about this, what about that? They're just in fear which means it's their organic reaction to where they're going, which means they need every I dotted, every T cross. That's perfectionism. And when they're in perfectionism, oh, man, they're in sheer overwhelm. So anyway. Lee, this has been absolutely beautiful. I'm sure all our subscribers, all the people who are watching this are going to get so much out of this, Lee. It was just such a beautiful deep dive, you know, thinking about the unconscious business person, uh, there was so much more to it. And I know, you know, I may repeat this title a hundred times over the next 12 months because I tell you what, there's so many angles we can come in from. But Lee, what a beautiful delivery 
I really, really enjoyed that one today. I enjoyed them all, but this was really up for me and, and I'm sure for a lot of other people that's, it, that's going through situations right now. So here we are. No like, subscribe, all those beautiful things. Thank you for all the comments you put on there. And we're going to say until this time next week, at least anyway, bye for now.